Welcome to the Keel Hall Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea Thieves news to cover today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. We are in the last couple weeks of season three, and I wanted to talk about balance. I wanted to talk about the latest event, Jewels of the Deep, as well as some cursed and cursed chests that you guys sent some feedback in with. All that and more in this week's episode of Keel Hall Podcast. But first, it is time for the Patreon call out. Head over to patreon.com forward slash keelhauled podcast to help support me in making this podcast happen. You guys have done a great job helping me upgrade some of my equipment to make it easier to edit the podcast to make sure it's sounding better and it makes a world of difference. It really does. So thank you to Chateau Neuf, Cosmic Johnson, El Jefe Esteban, Gingerbeard, Trickster, Jabaro5, Kazia the Rogue, Lumpy SRQ, Dub Dub Goose, Evil Moon. Morpheus, Xbox, Mike 29, Munchie, Regis Stella, Rust Belt Kid, TN Professor, Vibrolux, Big Bad Pad, Mina Fairy, Super Pack, Davram TV, Fergatron, Straw Hat Connor, Windsor Chris, and Zam. Wow. Thank you all so much for your support. It means the world to me as well as the rest of the patrons who are helping out. If you want to help me, it means a lot. I know you get the ad free version and you can join in with the community episodes at the Gold, Hear- Gold Hoarder tier, but Overall, this just helps me in general. It makes a big difference, and I wanted to thank you for that. So thank you so much to all of you who are listening, who are sharing it, who are putting in reviews over at Apple Podcasts or following over on Spotify or liking it on YouTube. It helps so much, and it means the world to me. It really, really does. So thank you for that. First up on today's docket, let's get into events. Now, if you are playing the game regularly, this shouldn't be an issue for you. But if you happen to be listening to this and you don't know, the Borderlands ship livery cosmetic set is still active. You have until September 7th to earn the rewards necessary to be able to get this ship cosmetics. Head over to seeathieves.com forward slash making dash mayhem if you want to find out what type of mayhem challenges are available to earn this set. Again, we don't know when this Borderlands set is going to be brought back, if at all. So if you're a fan or you just like the color scheme, now's the time to be getting in there to make sure that you have that done. Some of the minor and major challenges are easy and tend to revolve around gun powders or vaults you can still do other things to get them like completing a flame heart event by using powder uh, blunder bombs fire bombs chain shots against ghost targets uh, ghost ships and that will help escalate the uh, not escalate but advance your favors within this challenge uh, if you guys want do me a favor head over to your uh, podcatcher wherever you're listening to this on and just take a quick look over at pirate talk radio it is another sea of these podcast by davram who's one of the patron supporters, and he came up with a really good list of some interesting things for an event uh, that would revolve around mayhem. I sent him a couple messages about some things that I would have added to that, but it was a really good list, and I think it definitely would have been a little more interesting given the nature of the Borderlands set and things that we could have done for this event that would have made a little more different than what we got with the plunder games the uh the the olympic celebration and i'm going to be talking a little bit more about season three as a whole as i talk about the balance of events um towards the end of this episode but uh i figured i would let you guys know just about this and we got a new event so starting up on september 2nd and going till uh september 16th I believe we have the Jewels of the Deep challenges. This is a new Bilge Rat adventure that is going on currently. There are four rewards that are available through favors. Uh, One of those is actually going to be the Jewels of the Deep Scars. And this is kind of an interesting looking little uh, circles that appear on your pirate that look like they might have been from barnacles that had broken off. Really hard to kind of tell. Uh, Then you've got the Jewels of the Deep Makeup, which is kind of uh, just a a quick covering of the face with some tealish paint. Then you've got the Jewels of the Deep Tattoo Set, which has some fish, some coral, as well as a couple little circles like air bubbles. And then, of course, a title all of these can be achieved by earning favor with the bilge rats uh you have to get up to 500 this is something that is not very hard to do so what do you have to do well you have to go out 
and earn favor by defeating ocean crawlers, phantoms, or by destroying statues, whether they be sapphire, emerald, ruby. You can also earn favor by killing sirens or siren leaders, or if you go and do Tall Tale 2 of A Pirate's Life and you defeat the Siren Queen, you will earn a large amount of favors. Currently, if you're working on this event, take a trident of dark something or other and take it with you because if you take a bubble stick or a bubble wand and you destroy some of these creatures with that bubble wand you can earn double the favor for that i was working with uh, a friend one night for a couple hours and then with some keel hauled members during the weekend and we managed to knock this out fairly quickly as far as the rewards go i do like these i like how easy they are to uh, accomplish but this isn't really the test of the event see they have a gem turn in quest uh, that is part of this event so if you go out and you want to earn a ruby sovereign eye patch it is a blank eye patch with a ruby gem studded in the middle of the eye uh, i think kind of like the eye patch that you have for the sovereign set currently if you can't quite remember what that looks like think of uh, one-eyed willy from uh, the goonies which i know some of you haven't seen yet we're going to rectify that later this month so head over there find some mermaid statues get some gems whether you get it from ocean crawlers it can be either siren gems or mermaid gems either will do you just have to turn them into any reputation it doesn't matter if it's a uh, merchant alliance it doesn't matter if it's gold hoarders or souls if it's going to be uh the i think it's hunter's call or the reapers uh you can turn them into any of the reputations except for athena because athena doesn't accept gems naturally and you will be able to earn the favors for those uh once you collect 100 you will then get your eye patch and that will be the end of the event so the thing i like about this it's varied it is not necessarily the same thing that we were doing with uh, the Plunder games. It is not exactly the same thing that we were doing with a Mayhem. This event at least has you going out and doing something that will earn you gold in the world. Uh, it deals with using the Trident, so you get used to that. And it also has you tackling some of the new uh, fighting or new, new creatures in the world that we are uh, looking to fight. So Phantoms, Ocean Crawlers, as well as Sirens. So I like that they're using an event to reestablish or not reestablish but reaffirm the changes that came with a pirate life so they added a whole bunch of new content and i think this is a great way to help try and get people to do stuff to learn how to fight against these things to get accustomed to how the ai works and to get comfortable with the trident even if the they they went ahead and nerfed it a little bit so let's talk about drawbacks of this event uh the drawbacks to this event is two things mainly uh, the first one being that Thieves Haven is the best way to get gems in the game. Subsequently, because of this event, Thieves Haven is going to be the thing that you want to run if you want to ensure that you're getting 100 gems. I worked two nights with a couple crews to do a few of the Thieves Haven runs. I think I've done three, maybe four total alongside killing ocean crawlers and statues when we came across them. And I'm up to 50 gems out of my 100 with a little less than two weeks to go i'm fairly confident that by the time the end of season three comes around i'll be able to have all of this event completed and not have to stress too much about getting the ruby sovereign eye patch uh, the emerald eye patch and the sapphire eye patch are available though i do believe those are locked behind curse breaker commendations so if you go into the bilge rats and you scroll back to the very beginning of when bilge rat adventures were a thing back when i started calling duke the dark lord you will see the curse breaker event and i believe that those uh cosmetics are locked behind those i'm going to actually double check in a second here but Overall, I, I don't like that we're having to do Thieves Run Havens uh, uh, runs again, the Athena Thieves Haven run. I don't like that we're having to do that again. I, I know how much people uh, love how much you can get for Athena reputation for that. I know that a few people this weekend were able to get up to level 20 in Athena reputation as a result, but a lot of people grinded out those Athena Thieves Haven runs to try and get the commendations uh, knocked out so they could get uh, the cosmetics for the pirate legend cannon capstan and wheel unlocked when that first came out not because we were going for gems but but because we were going for the different types of athena loot the athena loot 
in those runs is still something that is drastically missing missing from the Athena Fortune voyages. I really do think that we're overdue for an Athena's Fortune voyage overhaul. Those legendary voyages are stagnant and they turn into reputation for other companies that don't benefit the Athena's Fortune. We shouldn't be getting reputation for Gold Hoarder, Order of Souls, or Merchant Alliance on a Athena run. We should be doing Athena loot on an Athena run. And that's why I'm hoping that in the future, they will take another look at that Athena, uh, Athena Thieves Haven run. That's a weird thing to say. Athena Thieves Haven, Athena Thieves Haven, Athena Thieves Haven. I guess it's not that bad. I hate that we're doing these to try and get mermaid gems because it is the most sound way of getting gems. Because for whatever reason, uh, digging up items for <laughs> it's such a weird thing we're digging up items for athena thieves haven run that we can't turn into the actual mysterious stranger i'll let that sink in for a second i can't quite figure that out why are we digging up athena crates athena baubles uh getting mega kegs and skulls we're getting all of those with these thief haven uh thieves haven athena runs but we're getting gems and i guess the gems is in lieu of getting items that you would normally get to be able to turn in so i guess it's a, i guess it's a fair compensation considering you're not getting specific loot for the uh, athena emissary so in that case if you're going to get something at least have it be something that you can put towards any of the trade companies i guess that makes sense i retract my prior statement And now for some breaking news. Earlier today, reports came in that a brigantine was found off the southwest coast of Crescent Isle. No word yet on where the crew is, but witnesses say they found a significant amount of treasure outside a rock formation. Experts suggest that the brigantine crew could have been attempting to break into an ancient vault. These vaults are said to contain tributes for one gold hoarder. Little is known about the pirates who may have removed a significant portion of this tribute before being locked inside by a door set to a timer. The sloop crew who found the empty ship reportedly took the treasure from the rock formation and after sailing for some time, reported the treasure stolen to the Reaper's Bones emissary. When asked about the potential murder of the missing crew, they merely responded, we didn't do it, it wasn't our vault. This has been Sea of Thieves News, now back to the high seas with new bees. One thing that I did want to mention as well too, you're going to be able to receive bonus gold and reputation whenever you hand in siren or mermaid gems to particular trading companies during the event. So don't be too greedy with uh, the gems in general. Check out the regular rewards section of the events hub to see which trading company is currently offering a bonus. <laughs> Next on today's docket, I wanted to dive a little bit into the season three overall. How did it go? How did it, it turn out? Are we happy with it? Uh, or were there things that could have been changed to improve the overall scope of the season? So right off the bat, I think that the story that we got for uh, A Pirate's Life was insane it was a ton of content that got dropped it brought in a pirate's life uh pirates of the caribbean franchise into sea of thieves and the melding there was a a great way to try and introduce something that was familiar with something that per pertained to outside lore and it was really really just well done I, I i think there was maybe a couple things that i would have changed uh towards the later half of the tall tales but i'm pretty sure i've covered that in the past as well too if you're not sure go back to listen to some of those older episodes because i think honestly i think tall tale 5 would have been better if during that fight it wasn't so much on rails and if we had had actual impact by the giant mermaid statues i i honestly don't know anyone that's gone into one of those statues either by accident or on purpose to see what happens and as a result they they felt like they were kind of just things to do to progress the rest of the tall tale I think that the team ran out of time here. I don't know for sure. I would love to talk to Mike about that and see if they had bigger plans for that because I think it would have been fun to 
fight your way up to the top of the spire. Uh, when you get up to the spire, there's not much going on there. I would have loved to have been able to, to go up there and uh, to fight Davy Jones himself. I think it would have been great to, to have that battle up there. I think it would have been way nicer if they had had a, a respawn point towards the top of the tower to make sure that you're checkpointed. So in case you die during the Davy Jones fight, you could at least come back after you get back from the ferryman. I think it would have been a way better capstone to, uh, or capstone to the, the entire tall tale experience. If you felt like you were actually taking on the enemy that you were, that being said, the fight that we got with the Gold Hoarder in Tall Tale 4, exceptional, absolutely amazing. I loved the theatrics of the event, even though it was gating off different time periods. Uh, they gave you plenty of, of uh, artillery to take out all of the mobs that were there, even if you were solo. And it still told a story while you were going about it, even though it didn't explain everything from the get-go. Looking at the rest of the season... Uh, the season itself felt extremely light as far as events go. I think a lot of uh, the team worked hard to put together a pirate's life, and I, I think they were hoping that that would extend the duration of the season uh, for a lot longer. I think a lot of us finished up uh, a pirate's life who were hunting to try and get it done. I think we all finished it a little bit sooner than I think Rare was intending or was hoping, and that that would have a little bit longer of a shelf life. What I would like to to change about the season if I could if I was sitting down with the team talking about how we wanted to implement some of these and I knew that some of these things were in our back pocket here's what I would have done I would have taken the uh, Borderlands Mayhem event and I would have probably kicked that off right off the bat I would have said hey you know what Borderlands is a thing we've got a new livery set look forward to the the movie when that's coming out and I would have kicked that off shortly after July kicked in. So there was something to work on then. Then after that, I would take the Jewels of the Deep event and I would have that run between July and mid-August. That way you've got a full month to work on this. And I probably would have upped the requirements of how much it took to actually do this. Uh, I probably would have had people work a little bit harder, put in some grind to actually get some of the favors done. I think the favors that they have right now are great because you've only got a couple weeks to actually do this. So they want to make sure that if you only have a few hours, you can jump in and get strong progress to getting those rewards without feeling like you're going to miss out because the event time is so short. A lot of this kind of goes back to how they've implemented pirate uh, build red adventures in the past. Originally, they wanted to have a one week cadence with uh, content. They quickly realized that two weeks was a better uh, stance on having the build red adventures last that and then eventually we moved on to month-long events where it would kick off at the beginning of the month we would have a good four weeks maybe five weeks to actually work on an event and the new content would roll in right after that and they felt fairly confident with that cadence until seasons then seasons came in and they said that they would have bigger content sections for the entire season and events rolling throughout the entire three-month period after Jewels of the Deep, in the middle of August, I would have kicked off the Plunder Games as a celebration of the Olympics. I think tying it to the Olympics during the time that it was actually going on is it's tough. It's it's tough to judge whether or not that's appropriate or not. We had summer game summer of games last year and it seemed to work out just fine. We got cosmetics from that and a lot of people were used to doing the same things that we do during the trials that are available each season, but I think it would have at least given us some space between the Mayhem event and the Plunder Games event with some variants in there with the Jewels of the Deep. Now, let's talk about events in general. Right now, the events are getting stagnant. Uh, we are getting accustomed to what we have to do. We are getting efficient at how to do them. I do agree that there needs to be some events that will help onboard pirates to give them an idea of what to expect with an actual event. But I think that we are missing the uh, large sweeping curve that comes from beginner to experienced 
uh, in many games, you always hear easy to pick up, hard to master. And I think that is where we need to get our events to. It's tough to say how we get to that because you'll always want to have something that is achievable for people that don't make this their main game. But at the same time, rewarding the people who are diehard fans who want to be able to create something like this. Now, it's tough to say how you go about that because anything I say is going to sound grindy because at its base, Sea of Thieves is a very grindy loop based system. Uh, we are constantly doing uh, different events, different voyages, different, uh, excuse me, world events, I should specify, not, not like in-season events. We're doing world events, we're doing voyages, we're doing PvP. Those are the three main things that we do in Sea of Thieves. Very little of that is ever based around exploration. And I would say that the last time I saw us do something that was not tall tale based, but exploration based in the game was Glitterbeard. And not only was that a great tribute to Glitterbeard, but it was a beautiful investment into enriching the islands and the world of Sea of Thieves by giving us story through tales uh, that weren't locked behind actually kicking up a tall tale or dropping a voyage. It was emergent content. And I think that is where Sea of Thieves ex excels exceptionally well. Having emergent threats come out that are not under a world event is always fun because you're never quite sure how rare, and I don't mean this in a negative way, is going to PVE you to death. Sometimes that's really fun. The other day I was sailing with a crew. We were going after another uh, galleon. And as we were fighting that galleon, who was trying to turn in a bunch of their treasure at Reaper's Hideout, we were level five. We spawned into the server. We found them. And as we were fighting, they got krakened. And I hadn't seen a kraken in so long. I was giddy at the fact that they got krakened and we were going to have an opportunity to capitalize on this emergent threat. I don't know how rare fixes events. But I will say that having emergent events happen that are not underworld events is something I miss about the randomness that comes from a megalodon, the randomness that comes from a random skeleton, the randomness of a kraken. And seeing a giant tornado and knowing there's going to be a flame heart or a fort or a fleet or a fort of fortune afterwards is kind of dull for me at this point. It's tough to say that. It really is because... Everything that I go out and do, I still have a lot of fun doing, but I'm looking for that next big hit. I'm looking for that next big adventure. And it's tough to say that, honestly, because the more I think about it, the more I realize we just got Pirate's Life. And unfortunately, it's one of those things where because I play the game so much, I've already run all of those tall tales three or four times each, at least, if not including the time testing it on uh, Insiders in the last couple months where I've gone in to do my hour in Insiders and I've spent a few uh, times just going through different events or, or different tall tales to make sure things are working or make sure that, uh, you know, I'm getting stuck somewhere and reporting it, things like that. But I think that events need to move away from trials and move more back into doing actual world events. Tie the events that we're doing in game to things that are natural in the game, but not things that are chores, you know, make it profitable for people as well as earning cosmetics based around that. I think that the cosmetic based system that we're doing right now, where things are tied to commendations is great. But all of those commendations, if you've been here from the beginning of the game, are typically unlocked. So you just walk into the store and you buy the cosmetic and there's no added value to the process of acquiring it. Something that people who constantly shout from the rooftops that time limited cosmetics should stay time limited as uh, cosmetics and shouldn't be brought back to the game when i've gone and done all of the curse breaker commendations and i go in and i purchase the emerald sapphire sovereign eye patch and the uh sapphire uh, or the the emerald sovereign eye patch None of that has any value to me because I enjoyed the Curse Breaker event when it came back out in July of 2018, and I haven't done anything extra to earn the value of that eye patch. I've just spent the gold, which I earned from anything else. Let me have something that is an additional commendation. Build out the Bilge Rat adventures a little bit more so that we have new commendations to work on. And for the love of God rare, give me something to spend doubloons on other than Athena Thieves Haven runs. 
Ahoy there, Pirates. This is the ad for this episode, and I did want to let you know if you wanted to avoid these and just get a regular filler, you can head over to the Patreon. There's a special feed just for patrons that get the ad-free version. If you want to keep listening, though, I can't say I blame you because this week I want to let you know about Loot Crate and getting 15% off of most crates and crate subscriptions when you use the link and code Robots Radio in the show notes. Also, you can head over to audiobooks.com, get your first three audiobooks for free, and that can include any two VIP books or use the affiliate link for Green Man Gaming. If you're a PC gamer, you'd like to save money on games. It's one of the benefit of being a PC gamer. Head over to Green Man Gaming. You can get codes for Steam, Epic, any of the different stores that they have deals going on. They have deals going on all the time. And if you plan on buying there, please consider using our affiliate link. All of that goes straight to me through the network. Thank you all so much for everything that you do to support this podcast. It means the world to me and I continue to try and improve the quality and the content for you. With that pirates, let's get back to the show. All right, I think I'm not hang on one sec. I got to put this away. Hang on. Move my soapbox away so that Okay, soapbox is put away. Uh, I want to talk about some of the things that are going on in uh, my community, not necessarily the community as a whole, because there's a lot going on that I think everyone should really keep an eye out for on Twitter, as well as Reddit, a lot of great stuff going around. Happy to see so many pirates getting so many awesome photos out there for like summer events and stuff like that. Uh, still, again, missed my chance. Um, but I wanted to bring light to uh, 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 two things. One, uh, both coming from uh, People's Republic in the Discord. Last week, we had the Kill Hall Gord- Gold Hoarders on to talk about uh, different questions that People's Republic posted to us. And the one that I wanted to bring up that I asked, which was homework for you guys, uh, you guys actually responded. And I appreciate that so much because as a podcaster, you are all the the uh the the food for this podcast like you guys give me something to talk about when there's not always something to talk about and as we go into the end of the season there's not going to be a whole lot to talk about for the future so uh thank you to uh people's republic uh i'm going to talk about one thing real quick but there was a um a, a question that was asked of him uh what kind of curses or cursed chests would you like to see in the game and I got a lot of responses from people. And I think uh, I wanted to dive into some of these to see if these were things that you guys wanted as well. If you if you think they're a good idea, what would you like to add or change to them as well, too? So Hilarious on Twitter uh, posted an image of a drawing that they put together, which basically outlines what a mermaid chest would be. Uh, the, the flavor text around it says that Merrick heard rumors of pirates meddling with mermaid statues, turning them into chests to hold unknown artifacts. And it's up to you to look for these in the deep waters. This is something that looks kind of like a, uh, a mermaid statue with the head and some, uh, kind of, uh, coral-esque barnacles built around it with some, uh, metal things on it. It says the curse effect, unlike the mermaid statue, this chest won't hurt you as long as it's underwater. But as soon as it's dried up, it will hurt any pirate standing too close to it. Best to keep it near water or water it with buckets. The special ability, this chest allows pirates to breathe underwater as long as they hold onto it or swim close to a crewmate holding it. Here's the real interesting thing about this. The value of this depends on the gem that you put in the open etching or slot inside the front of the chest. So in the very front of the chest, there's going to be a place where you can put a gem similar to how we put the keys for vaults into the little tablet. Same thing here. So if you put in a ruby gem, you'll get a higher value. If you put in a mermaid gem or a, excuse me, not a mermaid gem, an emerald gem, then you'll get a lower value. And then again with a sapphire. So that was Hilarious's uh, uh, suggestion. Uh, they do a great job of posting photos and memes on Twitter. If you get a chance, uh, we got glitch or glitchy storm over on Twitter says ocean crawler curse. When you have a merge gem embedded in your chest and other stuff like that. So think of, uh, like becoming more like a Davy Jones kind of crew member, I think is where, where they're going with this. Uh, let's see. 
Chris John, or no, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, where are we going next? We're going with Windsor Chris. Windsor Chris, I think a mermaid curse would make sense based on the Pirates of the Caribbean tall tales and a greater emphasis of mermaids and sirens in the game. I would love to see kind of where we go with this. Would we start to look more like mermaids or would we start start to look more like the sirens, uh, Windsor? Do you think you'd want to have it more like the the sirens or uh and have big eyes like that and fins would that actually give any benefit to people or do you think it should just be cosmetic as well too uh davern wrote in said i'd love to see a tidal chest uh title is in like tidal waves uh when active it pulls you towards it like a tidal whirlpool that would be really interesting. I know a lot of people have been asking for war, whirlpools. I don't know why it's hard to say. Whirlpools in Sea of Thieves. Uh, big, big swirling vortexes of water that draw ships in and make it harder for you to sail outward. Then we have Captain Deadeye Drays from the uh, Golden Sands blog post. Wrote in and said, I've always wanted a cursed chest that tonks. Either only one person on the crew can hear it, or the whole crew can hear it and it intermittently talks. Could comment on things you're doing or your location. Another one that could be fun is a chest that blares loud music. I like the, uh, the idea of a talking chest. In fact, I like the idea of a chest that talks to different people. They can hear it. Others can't. But the instructions vary and you have to try and work out which of the of the things that the cursed chest tells you is true and which of the things that the cursed chest tells you is a lie. And that way you have to try and venture out to different areas to see work out, you know, kind of suss out the truth from the lies uh, and find out, you know, where is the real treasure buried? You know, where is the the really valuable stuff? You know, this chest would be good. It'd be like five grand. But if you listen to it, if you sussed out the truth of it, you could find a box of wondrous secrets, something like that. I think it would be really cool. Fish Hook Cook over on Twitter said barnacle chess or curse with starfish and seaweeds. A lot of people want something that really kind of draws in that that look from the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Davy Jones, you know, the Flying Dutchman and stuff. Uh, and then Captain Bones, of course, on Twitter says Skeleton Curse. We did get something like that with uh, the last uh, Christmas holiday. We got the, oh, I can't think of what was the name of that one. I'm blanking on the name of that Skeleton Curse, uh, but it was like the Krampus character. And uh, it's good. We also got the Warsmith costume which also is a very skeleton-esque style but we don't have anything that would give us the freedom to wear the clothing that we want but also still have a, a curse that changes the appearance of us uh similar to the way that we wanted uh wanda the warsmith so when wanda the warsmith was still mostly human uh over at um gosh what was that golden sands i think no was it sanctuary it was sanctuary i'm pretty sure it was oh wow my brain um shoot nope it was golden sands i remember now uh it has a different island compared to where the tavern is I, re I remember for sure so back when salty wasn't a skeleton pirate and he was actually still a uh, weapons maker uh he joined forces with wanda wanda was uh messing around with cursed metal that helped give us the cursed cannonballs and her arm was all skeletal at one point in time that is something that has been wanted by the community for a very, very long time. Uh, the last message that I got actually did come from People's Republic uh, regarding to the own question. Uh, he posted the question to me, but believe it or not, his youngest, Case, who is eight, uh, wanted to answer the question as well and came up with a few ideas that I think are really cool. So here's what uh, he wrote for me. In the same way that we got a chest of rage in the roar, uh, he wants a unique chest that represents the other three C's, the original three C's. Like the wilds chest could cause your ship to act like it was in a storm with having to hold the wheel, uh, unable to sail straight without major corrections, you know, spinning compass, possibility of lightning, boards popping, the whole shebang. The ancients would have a spontaneous waves of sea creatures or phantoms spawn hostile on your ship and the shores of plenty would be marked on the map but would be worth about 25k 
if turned in to the gold hoarder emissary uh, or or being held onto. And in the longer that you held onto it, your crew gets credited 3,000 gold for every mile sailed while being held. You drop it, that mile doesn't count. Uh, I really like that idea. It reminds me of an idea um, I, I had a while ago where it was a chest that was uh, akin to the Shores of Plenty, but you picked it up and while it was something that you held, it would earn value. So someone had to always be hanging on to it. But the longer that you held on to it, the more value it earned. Imagine if it was a portal inside the chest and it was ultimately filling up the chest with more and more gold or treasure and things like that. And with that chest, the higher the value of that chest, the heavier it got. So either the slower it would take for you to actually move it around, or you may actually have to get help moving it from another person. Subsequently, the heavier the chest, it would also mean that your ship would start to go under the effects of a ballast ball, something like the heavier it is, the lower the ship sinks into the water, and the more likelihood that if you were actually hit by any cannonballs, whether it be like mid-deck shots or uh, any shots on the, the base level, your ship would fill faster as a result. So it's a good give and take of how long do you hang on to it, how much value do you want to get into it before it eventually sinks you because it's just so heavy those are all of the ideas and feedback that i got uh if you if i miss something from you let me know you can always send me an email at c-a-p-t-l-o-g-u-n at gmail.com i've just been getting a bunch of people trying to sell me editing software and stuff so i would love to hear from some pirates who are actually uh, giving some feedback from there and if uh you come up with an idea if you're thinking about it hey pause the podcast write it down and then send me a message over on twitter at c-a-p-t underscore l-o-g-u-n the last thing that i wanted to bring up uh was a new mechanic for the game so i'd been talking with people's republic for a while uh we were doing some dm work and he came up with an idea that i think has merit and would love to hear what other people hear about it uh, i'm going to leave a link in the show notes to the new mechanic that's in the feedback and suggestions forums over on seethieves.com the new mechanic from people's republic states that attaching a broken emissary flag to your ship a new opportunity uh mechanic to be added for this would be attaching flying and progressing with fallen flags of those who have sunk you can only lower a flag in port by vote but you can put up a broken flag on the captain's table and vote to raise it to start earning at its current level once your flag is down should you lose your emissary flag regardless of the emissary and your flag is raised by another crew an indicator of your raised flag will be seen on the map table giving opportunity to go back for retribution the normal mechanics applied to uh, if you lower the flag you get corresponding reputation in gold as if you had achieved the emissary value all by yourself a crew shall not benefit from both raising and selling as a broken flag once a broken flag is attached to your ship it acts as the current emissary flag system until lowered or lost by sinking what do you all think of this i think there's uh, an opportunity to play around with the idea i think that there's a great chance that if people were going after emissaries say you spawn onto an island uh in in out in the uh wilds and you happen to see an emissary out there doing gold hoarder emissary vault missions and they've got a level two or a level three and you know that they're going to have a level four or five soon once they complete that vault if you could sail over there sink that ship grab their vault loot and their flag and raise their flag knowing that it would mark you on the map for them so they could come back and hunt you down would you do it knowing that you could grab their treasure put it on your ship raise the flag up to five run over turn in the treasure drop the flag and gain all the value of that without having to do half of the work that is part of the, the the perk of being a reaper. You go out, you hunt down other emissaries, you take their treasure, and you get the value of their flag as well. It's something that I think would maybe 
add a little interest for people who are going out after emissaries, maybe that's too much heat for emissaries. Maybe emissaries don't want to have that much heat on them uh, with both reapers and non-emissaries hunting them down. Uh, but I think it's an opportunity as well, too. Um, I, I would love to know if there's a way that if you could start earning emissary reputation and value just by going out and getting treasure as well, too. So many times you're out there, you don't want to be marked on the map but you do want to do uh, different voyages. And I wonder if there's a way that you can raise an emissary post getting con uh, uh, treasure. And afterwards, you maybe get half of the value of the bonus. But when you start turning stuff in, uh, it starts to raise up that, that reputation level as you're turning stuff in. So it won't be as fast as doing it if you started from the beginning, but you will start to earn a little bit more afterwards so give me some ideas let me know what you're thinking is, is this sparking any kind of a uh, 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 genius idea some new mechanics that you want to see or is this something that you want to see tested in insiders and see if they could actually see if this would be something that would be fun to do Last item on today's docket, I had a quick captain's log that I wanted to share with you. I had such a good time sailing around with the keelhauled crew this weekend. Uh, we went out, we got a couple brigs together, and we managed to work on Athena Thieves Have runs for a while. It was the Brits versus the mostly Americans, and it was a great time. Uh, I had a good time sailing with uh, Mina Ferry, Big Bad Pad, Mina's uh, little boy, uh, as well as uh, Super Pack and uh, Space Admiral Ors, who is our little boy. And we had a good time just going from island to island. We were uh, taking out, <laughs> I feel really, hey, hey. Hey, you, Mr. Brig in the uh, in the in the Bay of Devil's Ridge, I appreciate that you want a truce and that you you want to alliance and that you're friendly. I really, really do. But I, I know that you guys had supplies on your ship and stuff that I wanted. And I appreciate the donation and your conformity to being the, the pirates. Not conformity. Conformity is the wrong word. Uh, supplication, maybe? We'll go with supplication. I appreciate your supplication in giving me your, uh, your, your treasure as well as your supplies. It was very, very much appreciated. Um, but we went and did some Thieves Haven runs. We, we did a few of them as we were going about our day. We got two of Athena flags uh, emissaries up to rank five, and we did the uh, a subsequent Athena mission afterwards, which I think is actually the best Athena voyage you can possibly get, as short as it is, given the rewards. Even though there's some danger of uh, having a mega keg on board, that that is oh, it's worth so much. It's so nice, but we did a couple of those, and the best time, the 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 most fun that we had during that was when we were working on selling our treasure. We were heading over to Plunder Outpost to uh, turn in what we had because we had a couple kegs on board. We wanted to get rid of those. We had already narrowly escaped a few storm interactions as well. So I was getting hit by lightning like crazy. It was ridiculous. But one thing that we noticed was there were a couple reapers out there. One was a sloop that we completely demolished. And then uh, one was a brig crew. There was a reaper five that spawned into our surfer and beelined it for us uh, compared to the other reaper that was over at reaper's hideout turning in. And this was hilarious. This reaper tried to come around the, the south side of Plunder Outpost. Now, bear in mind, we've got two brigantines parked up against the west side of the island over by the actual dock, turning in treasure, gems, Athena stuff. We were doing it all. We were trying to get rid of as much as, it, uh, as we could so that we were less of a liability if we did actually sink. But we managed to get most of it done. We uh, broke away from the actual dock and turned around to start engaging with the brigantine. And as both of us uh, were firing upon this brigantine, I don't think they really anticipated both of us doing it. I think they saw that there were two emissaries camping out together and just completely expected a bunch of PvE lords looking for some crabbies to kill because we just we were going hard on them uh, to the point where we were circling around. They they turned around and they started 
started to flee away from us as they were circling. They went started going counterclockwise around a uh, plunder outpost, and we were shooting out of the cannons, trying to snipe them. And as we were uh, sailing by, they started to head west from plunder outpost. And uh, Mina and the Brit crew uh, started heading east as they passed by to get a couple volleys on them. Meanwhile, Super Pack and Ors and I were following them uh, westward towards uh, towards the uh, gosh, I would guess it would be like shark bait and the the pinnacle and one thing that they noticed was that two of the crew members from the reaper five crew shot over to plunder outpost hit the tall tail and bolted out of the uh server through one of the portals and it was like are you kidding me i was just talking to captain falcor and smexy about running reapers and it's just it's so crazy like they literally came in for a fight they literally came for a fight and as soon as they realized they were going up against two brig crews who were not afraid to fight they booked it they their tail between their legs they pulled up anchor and they shot off into one of the tall tails good job get out of here oh my gosh it was hilarious and i i just shout out to my crew members shout out to our other sloop or to our other brigand team i had such a good time uh chatting with you all in in the party chat it's the thing that i look forward to the most and as a result i just i i have so much fun getting to actually sail around with everyone so thank you for that um it made for a great story we made a ton of progress on the event and i'm so looking forward to another opportunity for us to dive in together to just have fun and see thieves it's so much fun but pirates that's going to do it for this episode if you want to get a hold of me there's plenty of ways to do it head over to uh, patreon.com if you want to support the podcast otherwise put in a review over at uh, apple podcasts follow me over on spotify subscribe over on youtube send me a message through twitter at c-a-p-t underscore l-o-g-u-n join the discord or send me an email c-a-p-t l-o-g-u-n at gmail.com plenty of ways to go about this it means the world to me i'm continuing to, to just dive into this content i cannot wait to find out what's coming with season four Pirates, we're getting close. We're getting so close to season four. I, I have hopes. I have real big hopes. We're going to get that flame heart tall tail. We're going to get rid of him out of the sky. It's going to be amazing. Just wait. I know it. It's soon. Other than that, Pirates, that's it. Thank you. I love you. And I look forward to sailing with you on the Sea of Thieves. the cyberpunk tabletop games or excited for cyberpunk 2077 are you looking to brush up on the lore stay up on all the latest news and talk about the game when it comes out check out the cyberpunk lore cast a show from robots radio with me your host robots we'll go over all the details you need to know about the world characters and story of cyberpunk available on itunes spotify google play and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Following is a public service announcement from the Starter Set Dungeons and Dragons podcast. This is your D&D campaign. This is the Starter Set podcast. You know how like poison frogs don't lick each other's backs. So it's Howl's Moving Castle mm -hmm. with a face. Mm -hmm. Hey there, I'm Great Mandibles. <laughs> Because one of the party speaks abyssal. You're all going to die. <laughs> and then adventure falls into your lap. Plop. This is your D&D &D campaign after listening to the Starter Set Podcast. <laughs> so join Sam and Ed every Friday on the Starter Set Podcast for prime Dungeons & Dragons content. Any questions? <laughs>